Good morning, everybody. How you guys doing today? I hope you guys are doing good. I have been better. I was gonna come on here and kind of like fake a little bit of energy and then I was like, you know what? I'm just gonna be real. I'm not doing so good. We've been in like a five, 5K kilometer, like I can't go outside five kilometers basically. That's what I'm trying to say. You do feel kind of like trapped. Like it's been like months like this and having a chronic illness and um, yeah, I'm just not not great and I didn't want to come on here and pretend I was great but I know filming will make put me in a better mood so yeah let's just get into that instead so this is actually a Friday favorites video so the last Friday or the first Friday of the month I do my monthly favorites but I do them on a Friday so I call them my Friday favorites every month I show you guys something new that I'm going to be trying for the next month I usually do it at the end of the video but I'm actually going to start with this because I'm just so excited about it okay I got a pizza stone I'm so me and Davey have been looking at this pizza stone and it kept going out of stock like all the time. It came back into stock. I managed to get it on sale, which is even better. We make homemade pizzas a lot, but we always get like the soggy bottoms. <laughs> That's what Mary Berry says. Basically this pizza stone is supposed to help with that. It's supposed to stop it from getting that soggy bottom and keeping like a nice crisp. I haven't tried it yet, but that's what I've heard it's supposed to do. We get our flour and our yeast from our local pizza store, like our local pizza restaurant, I should say. We're gonna like probably leave it for about two days to, you know, like, what's the word? Not for mint. So it gets like really elastic. And then I like to do the like knuckle thing. I'm not good at it. I, I'm, I'm, I'm getting there, but we're really excited about it. And you know what? <laughs> I wanna know what your favorite pizza topping is because I'm gonna tell you mine. Black olives. I just like black olives on my pizza. Other things as well if I want, but like black olives. I could sit down and just eat an entire jar of black olives and it has to be black olives because I don't like green olives. They're okay, but they're not like black olives. My dad said, you can't tell black olives and green olives apart. And I was like, yes, you can. So him and my sister tested me, blindfolded me. I had all the different ones and I tested them and I was like, black, green, black, green, black, green. I know my olives. I think he thought we were cheating. That is something that me and my sister would do just to annoy him, but no, it was real. I know my olives, dad. I can also tell Coke and Pepsi apart. I think everyone can though. I don't think that's a special skill. <laughs> I'm a Diet Coke girl. My sister likes Pepsi. Mm -mm. Diet Coke all the way. Diet Coke in a can too. No bottles, thank you. Can. Actually, there's a documentary about Coke versus Pepsi. Davy was telling me about it. So that will be my documentary for recapping on next month. And last month's documentary was the Free Britney movement. It was a struggle to find a place to watch it. I will admit that. I feel like I had to jump through so many hoops in order to find it. Eventually my brother helped me figure it out. So I managed to watch it and I have words. First of all, is this gonna turn into a rant? Probably. Second thing is, I love Britney Spears. I think she is just lovely. I just want good things for her. So I'm watching this documentary and you know what? I didn't feel like I learned anything new, but I was able to watch it and understand the emotions that I always have felt. Just seeing the way that they literally create a narrative around her, the way that they frame who she is, very difficult to watch and not just get really like wound up. But I think that that's what's really important. What was said to her, what was said about her. There was a woman that said something about Britney Spears. <sighs> I can't even say what this woman said because my video will get flagged, but that woman said it on TV. It was almost like that was okay and just accepted. And you know what? I grew up with Britney Spears as like my icon. Like I had her posters, I had every album, I had her perfume, everything. I love her. I think she is, she's amazing. But you know what? My parents, they stepped in at certain times and they were like, this isn't appropriate and this is appropriate. When the Slave For You video came out, my parents, they saw it, they talked to me and they were like, we'd rather you didn't watch it. It's a little bit much for your age group. And they used their own parenting to parent me to make sure that I understood why they weren't being super strict. They were like, you can't watch that ever again. We need you to understand why we don't think it's appropriate. They didn't get annoyed at Britney Spears for creating that video. They were like, I'm just gonna parent my child. You parent your own child, you know? And then if you even take the example of the framing Britney Spears, and then you, you take Meghan Markle and the Oprah interview, and you see the differences between the way that Meghan and the way that Kate were portrayed in the media. When you see the headlines side by side, you think, what, how, how is this accepted? And I feel like the Britney Spears documentary highlighted a lot of that. When you call out stuff that's happening real time, people double down on it because they're probably involved or they probably have that narrative because that's the narrative that's being created and put out there. When you show them negative stories, 
stuff from the past. They can separate themselves so they don't double down and they can learn better. So I feel like the Britney Spears documentary has helped teach people the signs of what to look out for so they can go, that's what's happening here and be able to judge it better. You can definitely see the way that Britney Spears and Meghan Markle, because they aren't quiet, they're not in the background, they're not staying out of it, the narrative that was created versus somebody like um, Kate. I don't really know much about her, whereas I know a lot about Megan because she's more out there and she has every right to be. That's the thing. We need to stop saying, well, if they didn't do this and they didn't, no, okay? We need to stop putting women in boxes and that we're only accepting the women that are in boxes. We need to stop judging them at a different level just because they are out there versus somebody who's like more reserved because all we're doing is creating women who feel like they need to be more reserved and need to hold back and they can't express emotions and they can't express feelings. Even as women, we judge women who are more open and free with themselves because we're like, well, we're never allowed to do that. And so instead of getting annoyed at society for creating those boxes that we've placed ourselves in, we actually just get annoyed at the woman who isn't putting herself in that box. <sighs> I'm gonna get in trouble for this. Did that all make sense? I don't know if that, any of that made sense. I just I just had a little bit of rant. Now that's only the, the first part of that entire thing. I feel like the whole free Britney movement is a whole other issue completely. And definitely something that I feel like the actual documentary Framing Britney Spears only just touched on. I feel like we need an entire other one about the free Britney movement, in my opinion. And also about um, conservatorship. Did I say that correctly? Yeah. John Oliver did a video on that actually. And if you don't know much about it, I would recommend trying there first because he does it in like bite size and helps you really understand it. I feel like that's a whole separate thing. This is less of a Friday favorite, more of just me ranting. But anyway, it was a very good documentary. Highly recommend watching it. And I'm gonna watch the Pepsi one next because that seems kind of more lighthearted. I think if you wanna recommend any documentary kind of style videos for me to watch, let me know. And also let me know your thoughts on anything that I said. And I apologize if I didn't probably word this correctly and put things out there. I'm not actually very good at that. I'm, I'm trying to learn. I'm better with bouncing off somebody. I feel, I feel like I need a co-host to help me with these things. Anyway, enough about all that. Let me actually talk about makeup. <laughs> Because, uh, yeah, this is the Makeup Chair channel. Favorites for last month, hands down, has to be the Up Cosmetics 5 Second Eyes. They have three shades, and I'm I'm hopeful that they're going to come out with more shades because the formula is unbelievable. So these are these beautiful pops of pigment. They're not like a cream eyeshadow. Like, that's the thing. Like, they're like a creamy eyeshadow, you know? Like, a lot of cream eyeshadows I find are so creamy that they're actually more difficult to work with, whereas these are really easy to work with. That's, I think, why they call them five second eyes, because it's literally, I have it on today. I have uh, smoked bronze on my eyes, and I literally just put it all over and then just blend in a little bit of liner, done. They're really easy to work with. I actually did a full tutorial using them. I will link it up here and in the description box if you want to see it. I'll do more looks with the different shades. Like, I, I just love this. I feel like this kind of smoky look, I, I'm just, I'm really enjoying it. Moving on, I have some book recommendations. So first of all, this guy. This is Stuff Happens. Now, I love decluttering. I love watching videos online where it like teaches you all about how to, you know, organize your house and all this kind of stuff. And I watch them a lot. I thought I kind of knew everything about it until I read this book. One of the first things that I read in this book that made me go, oh, what? This is the day one checklist. Do not buy storage before you declutter. What did I do before I got this book? I went out and I bought six containers. And then what did I do? I put all the clutter in those boxes because I was like, well, I have these containers. I might as well just fill them up. No, you declutter first and then you get your storage because you might not even need as much storage as you think if you declutter first. So yeah, that was day one. If you are looking to organize and you just need real advice for real situations, this is the book that you need to try. I also got another book, it's called The Push. and. Oh, I don't want to go into too much detail because it's one of those books that if you learn too much about it, it will ruin it for you. But I got this book and I flipped to a random page and I just read that that page. That's what I always do. Whenever I get a new book, I flip to a random page, read that page, and then I go back to the start. So I read a page just in the middle and I was like, what is happening? And so then I went back and I just, I read that book so fast. Yes, it is it's gripping and it's like you can't put it down. I don't know about the ending as well. The ending was a bit like Oh damn. If you're looking for something to really just get you out of everything, give that book a try. And I have another book that I'm just about to start as well, which I'm really excited about. If you've read the book, let me know because I want to talk to somebody about it so bad. <laughs> it's just such an interesting book. Okay. Speaking of decluttering, I have been trying to declutter and clean out my makeup room. I cleaned all of my brushes. 
I'm super proud of myself. It felt like the biggest job until I started and then it was fine. But you know what helped is the Blank Canvas Cosmetic Soap. It is like a double cleansing soap. So like it breaks down the makeup, but it also like deep cleans it. I love it. So all I do is I get some water. I have my soap. It comes in like a tin. I wet my brush in the water, swirl it in the soap, and then just put it on a towel. And I keep doing that over and over until I get like a decent amount of brushes like done. And then I rinse them all at once. So much easier. And I think Blank Canvas actually have a Easter deal going on at the moment so go and check that out but that soap oh and they also came out with their new sponges now i swear by their sponges anyway the only sponges i ever use are, are by blank canvas anyway the shaping they're so cute they're so soft and bouncy and fluffy and i love them give them a go too i think that's all my friday favorites it's been a bit of a weird month this month i've got my hands on my hips it looks really weird on camera because you can't see my hips but it's been a bit of a weird month so having favorites has been a bit tricky i haven't been really applying too much makeup but i have been using this for date night the um the cream pots for date night once a week that's the only time i've been actually wearing makeup this is my first time in ages I put makeup on even though it's day night tonight so I'm gonna keep my makeup on. I also wanted to mention this just real real quick. This is the L'Oreal Dream Lens. If you have dry hair, get the Dream Lens. I'm not even kidding. They, it works. Like it, it seems to work. I, I bleached my hair. I don't know if you can tell, but I, I put some highlights in my hair and my hair is like so dry. So I was like, this is gonna be a really bad idea, but I've been using this. Oh my God, my hair is so soft so soft. I've been waiting off to use this because I wanted to tell you about it and I didn't want to show you like an used packet. <laughs> last thing, last thing, last thing, last thing is to recap on something from last month and that is the pestle and mortar bag. Have I been using it and do I enjoy using it? Yes. Talked about this last month. It's basically a wash bag that you place on the back of your door in your bathroom and every time you use up like your shampoo bottles or you know any of your cosmetic stuff you put it in here so that you can remind yourself to recycle these things properly and carefully so this is filled with all of my like empty shampoo bottles oh this is amazing by the way hair food banana oh my god me and davy <laughs> we go through this stuff so much this stuff as well this botanical repair actually there's still a little bit in that Yes, that brings us to the end of the video. I've actually really enjoyed just hanging out with you guys today. I was only just thinking about it today. Because I know a lot of you and I talk to a lot of you, when I'm talking about stuff, I feel like I'm sending a voicemail to a friend, you know? Because I'm pretty sure of like what a lot of your reactions are gonna be because I know so many of you so well. Even though it feels like I'm talking to myself, which I am talking to myself, it doesn't at the same time because I know that I'm talking to particular people. Anyway. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, please give it a thumbs up. I'd really appreciate it. These videos aren't very popular on my channel, but I'm still gonna do them because I just enjoy connecting with you guys. I will see you hopefully in a video really soon. As always, my friends, be kind to yourself. You're doing the best you can. We all are. And I'll see you in the next one. Bye.